hätten die Verbrennung der Amerikaner. What is up my beautiful mates of YouTube? My name is Ozzy Marcel and in today's video I'm going to be doing top 5 entry level dark fragrances for men. And I'll also be having some honourable mentions. So what makes a dark fragrance? In my opinion a dark fragrance is something that gives someone an edge and an air of mysteriousness. It, it gives people a mystique that they otherwise wouldn't have. Typically, you're going to find out in the wild, out in the public, people wearing fresh scents, blue scents, scents that are designed to give people the maximum amount of compliments while smelling good. A dark fragrance isn't going to get you immediate compliments. It isn't going to be beloved by everybody that walks past you or works with you. These are fragrances that, although they have a fan base, there are a lot of men and women and theys and thems out there that love the smell of dark scents. These are scents that you're going to wear for you. That's the power of a dark fragrance. So with that in mind, let's start with my honorable mentions. And you cannot do a dark fragrance list without mentioning the king of dark scents. And that is, well, the king of designer dark scents. John Vavaro's Dark Rebel. This one is a good mix of dark notes, leather, a sweet resinous amber note, touch of tobacco, a few aromatic notes. It's dense, dark, mysterious, and you'll often find people adding this to their dark fragrances, the bad boy fragrance lists, and for good reason. It's a very mature scent. There aren't going to be a lot of people under the age of 25 that are going to love the way this one smells, but if you've got the right outfit, if you've got the right style, the right aesthetic, you're going to pull this off and you're going to get monstrous compliments for it. That's the power of Dark Rebel. In my eyes, it's a mass appealing dark ascent, but it isn't so mass appealing that it's a no brainer. You've got to have the right sort of vibe to be able to pull this one off. Unfortunately though, the rumors are that it has been discontinued. So I stocked up and got three bottles of it because it really is a fantastic smelling fragrance. If you can find it at any price at all, pick it up. Performance is solid, although it could be better if it were an eau de parfum. All things considered, I adore the fragrance and I highly recommend it. Next up is another dark fragrance that's going to appeal to the masses, but I would say even more so than Dark Rebel. This is probably the least dark fragrance I'm going to be featuring on the list and that is why it's going to appeal to the most amount of people and that is Hugo Boss Bottled Night. Top notes, birch leaf, heart notes, cardamom, base notes, Lorello Amarello wood, musky notes. Now, the highlight here is this beautiful birch note. And that's what gives it this darkness. It's so natural smelling. It smells incredible. Performance is surprisingly great for a Hugo Boss scent. I sometimes wear this to bed because it, it's got this kind of warm, comforting charm to it. It's a little powdery. It's got some violet notes in here as well. It's fantastic. It's pretty affordable as well. I mean, you can go to Chemist Warehouse right now and get this for under $70 Australian for the 100 ml bottle. I can't stop smelling it. Even the just the gradient, it looks so cool. You've got like that dark, deep blue at the bottom that gradients to the black up top. You can wear this going out, you can wear it to bed. It's a versatile dark scent, an entry level dark scent. And I can't emphasize enough how good that birch note is. If you love your woods, if you want something that's really realistic regarding, you know, nature, trees, woods, check out Hugo Boss Bottled Night. And the last honorable mention is Narciso Rodriguez's For Him. This is an interesting one because it doesn't rely on a leather note. It doesn't rely on an incense note, smoky note, anything like that. This is a deeply musky fragrance. And I would say it's dark in the sense that a deep depression is dark. It exists in shades of grey with woody notes, aromatic green notes, and then that beautiful heart of musk. If you could attribute a colour to a fragrance like this, 
So imagine you've got a blue fragrance that's a little aquatic, it's a little aromatic. You've got a green fragrance that, that's natural and smells like plants. Then this is truly much like the bottle itself, a deep shade of grey. It almost reminds me of rain on the pavement. If you're after something that's evocative of the rain on the hot summer pavement, terrible breakup or something, maybe this is going to be the fragrance for you. It is an incredibly performative fragrance. However, it doesn't project like a monster after about two hours, but it will stay on your skin for a significant amount of time. You can find it for around about the $100 Australian mark. And if you're after a very unique scent, a dark scent that is grey and evocative of all sorts of melancholy and depressive notes. Maybe that doesn't sound appealing at all to you, but if it does, I would definitely check this one out. And I just want to mention one other thing, and that is if a fragrance is perhaps a little too dark for you, if you like certain aspects of a dark fragrance, but you want something a little more mainstream, or if you want to soften it a little bit, then I highly recommend getting a tonka bean based fragrance or a vanilla essential oil to layer it with. This is a vanilla fragrance oil, so you make your own perfumes out of this. And if something is a little too dark and you want to soften it a little bit, tonka or vanilla are great options for that. They're going to keep those dark notes front and center, but it's also going to give it the fragrance a roundness that it wouldn't otherwise have. So with that in mind, let's start this list. Let's start with the cheapest one, at least here in Australia, Yo Pom Absolute Eau de Parfum. The most underrated, the most criminally underrated Yo fragrance. Originally, I was a little underwhelmed by it, but as I've lived with it a little bit, as I've worn it a few more times, I have grown to appreciate this more than more than pretty much any other Yerp fragrance. This has a note of vanilla. It's got a pepper vibe, and it's also got this soft incense note. Now, the note of incense generally isn't presented as softly as it is here, so that is why I like to refer to this one as a fresh, dark scent. That fresh incense note, very rare, very uncommon. And the vanilla helps to soften it. This makes Yo Pom Absolute an amazing entry level dark fragrance because of that softness and roundness from that soft incense note and the vanilla. I highly recommend this one. On sale, you can pick this one up at Priceline for $50. Uh, I, hope this is, I hope this hasn't been discontinued because it's a remarkably underrated fragrance. Performance is pretty solid too, and about eight hours. Next up, we're going Middle Eastern with Arab Tradition by Nabil. This is a good fragrance because it is a clone of Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather. What have we got here? Tester strip? Oh, it's got a fragrance on it. Hmm, I can't remember what I sprayed on this, but it's pretty nice. Obviously, this isn't going to perform as well as a Tom Ford fragrance and obviously it's not going to have that smoothness and quality of ingredients as a Tom Ford fragrance. But if you're after a clone of Tuscan leather that gets you, you know, pretty close to the way there, then this is a great option. But performance, 48 hours. It can be a little screechy in the opening, so don't judge it too harshly in the first 20 minutes of wearing the fragrance. You get that fruitiness, that almost raspberry quality up top. And you get that smokiness and that leatheriness as well. You can pick this one up for about $60 Australian on eBay. I highly recommend it. Uh, Widder Online is the eBay store that I bought this through. And that was about $60. And I'm an eBay Plus member, so I got the shave $5 off of it. So I got it for like 55 bucks. People, there's going to be a certain amount of people that are going to dislike the way this one smells just because of that screechy, harsh opening. 
but once you let that settle a bit, you're left with a very leathery, smoky, and raspberry Ford scent. Now, Tuscan leather is a much smoother experience, and it has less of that screechy, smoky quality, but this is still, you know, it's close to Tuscan leather, and it's, you know, you're not paying $400 for it, so there is that as well. I recommend this. It's a very solid entry-level dark fragrance. In fact, it may even be a, t a tier above entry level just because of the screechy opening. It does have that sort of Middle Eastern power to it, which some people absolutely love. Either way, it's a great scent. Next up at $65 to $70, we've got Scotch and Soda Eau de Toilette for him. Love the presentation of this, it just has a luxurious sort of quality and feel to it. Except when you, maybe it's just my bottle, but when I remove it from the packaging, I've mentioned this in the review, it's just kind of a little cheap. Let's have a, have a go on the tester strip. Atomizer is good though. Now, this is a very interesting fragrance because it reminds me a little bit of a more aromatic Dior Fahrenheit. Not quite as floral. It's got a punchier, more peppery opening, but it has that sort of almost gasoline quality to it. And it's like $40 cheaper than Dior Fahrenheit, $50 cheaper than Dior Fahrenheit. So there is that as well. It's got this darkness, but it's also rounded out by a smooth vanilla note as it's slight as it starts to dry down. It smells incredible. Performs pretty solidly as well at about nine hours. But yeah, there's a smoothness to this one and it's, it doesn't have a sharp quality to it, but that gasoline note in the opening really makes this one interesting. Um, I really hope you get the chance to try this one out because I was a little critical of it when I first tried it, but as I've worn it a couple of times since I reviewed it, I've, I've started to appreciate it quite a bit more. It smells pretty damn nice. It's got that entry level dark quality that you're probably looking for. It will smell better on your skin. So if, if you're not impressed with it on a tester strip, try it on your hand. Anyways, scotch and soda for men. Check this one out. Next up, we've got one of Issey Miyake's greatest perfume creations, Newt Deacy. This has a very strong and immediate incense note. Very smoky, very sophisticated, very mature. But if you let it dry a little on your skin or on the tester strip, it really makes this vanilla quality stand out, rounds it out, warms it out. There's also a note of amber. You almost get an ambergris kind of feel to it. It's a very dark fragrance, very underrated in the fragrance community. And you can find it in Australia for under $100. I've been pretty lucky and fortunate in that I've been able to find this on clearance multiple times, multiple occasions from Priceline for anywhere between $30 and $40. So I've th I think I've got like three bottles of this as well. Just because a fragrance like this is never gonna have the popularity of a Dior Sauvage. It's never gonna have the popularity of a Bleu de Chanel or, you know, some sort of Highly mass appealing blue scent like that. Newt DC is an entirely different beast. The smokiness is really just to die for. And if you can find it, I highly recommend the Parfum as well. That ramps up that vanilla note. It ramps up that warm quality to it. This is just an ultra performative, exceptionally dark fragrance, whilst not being so dark that a beginner couldn't wear it. And last but not least, for about $75 to $80 Australian, you've got... How could you make a list like this without mentioning this? Encre Noir by Lalique. If you want something that goes in a boozier direction, go a la extreme. Or if you want something that goes in a fresher direction, go Encre Noir Sport. But what you've got here is the smell of a gum forest burning down. 
Now I live in an area of Australia where we've experienced bushfires on many occasions. You know, I worked somewhere that the last time we had bushfires in like late 2019, you could literally watch the embers fall out of the sky. You could watch the, the ash fall out of the sky. You stand outside of where I worked at the time and you would collect ash on you. That's how close we were to the bushfires. We could see the haze, we could see the fires in the distance. Just beyond the river, there were the fires. So, this evokes memories of that bushfire to me, but I wasn't personally harmed by it, nor was anyone in my family harmed by it. So I don't have that ultra negative connotation as a lot of Australians might. But it just smells like a gum forest burning down. It's very woody, it's very natural, it's got this smoky quality to it as well. It's sophisticated, mature, performance is incredible. It's the perfect dark fragrance. For the price, you are getting something that smells of niche quality. It is truly a remarkable scent. There aren't a lot of shops that stock this, so you'll probably have to buy it online from somewhere like eBay. But definitely check this one out if you're after a naturally woody, green, smoky fragrance. It's the pinnacle of dark scents, similar to Dark Rebel, but yeah. These are some dark fragrances that I highly recommend. I know this video has run a little long. If you've ever worn any of these fragrances before, let me know in the comments below. I can't wait to hear from you guys. And until the next video, my name is Ozzy Marcel, and I'll catch you guys around.